All human things are subject to decay. So when fate summons, even a monarch must obey. And yet, a setting sun describes a track of glory in the skies. The king was grown old. Only his horses at Newmarket seemed to please him. Did I tell you? He founded the great stables at Newmarket. Champion jockey he was with his brother James. James, waiting, watching. James, who trudged along unknowing what he saw. So whistled as he went for want of thought. James, who oft bewailed his fortune and his fate, to be the heir he had always made to wait. What Charles wanted was for the crown itself to be extraordinary. Good for the voice, my dear. Not like today, when the monarchy isn't even the tarnished gold fillings in a mouth full of decay. Rot set in, of course, with Queen Victoria, that no-neck little widow who spent most of the 60 glorious years of her reign skulking behind closed portcullis doors, leading a life of ineffable dullness, snapping at her huge family and foreign relations. Her husband, quite understandably, thought she was mad. The king still loved the ladies, of course. The latest being Mistress Louise, the Duchess of Portsmouth, whom he had known for some time, but who was French, Catholic, and called Fubs. Why, I was never able to discover. Her son, the Duke of Richmond, also founded a race course, as I'm told, at Goodwood, but oh, a merry monarch, scandalous but poor, restless he rolled about from whore to whore. And he still loved his music, though he did not pay for it. Young Harry was always with him, and with him, his new lady, Frances, to provide a welcome ode or an, an anthem, whatever was required. No matter the plot and counterplot, the scourge of violence lurked everywhere to the side of the hangings. Remember, returns it to the memory, the great Pope burning processions. Does the memory jog? Bread and carnivals, few took them seriously. The king knew men to a hair and never let them forget it. Do see them. Of his loins, not one legitimate. He has peopled the aristocracy of England. The Queen is barren. He should rid himself of her. If he will not, he must declare you Duke of Monmouth and his heir. As firstborn, bastard or no, you could be king, young man. The tragedy was that the king had no children of his own. No legitimate children. His bastard son, Monmouth, was always plotting against him. He loved his son. But he was not his heir. He was not the crown. Nature and nature's laws lay hid in night. Till God said, let there be Newton. And all was light.
from this blessed man, music just seemed to flow. Motets, anthems, songs, all manner of music for all manner of occasions. There was no dam, no stop to his golden flask. He was unstoppable. What do it say? Vivace. What do it mean? Fast and brisk. Why don't you say so, young man? Ain't it French enough for you? What do, what do I grave down here? Uh, adagio, if you would take the very great kindness, sir. Oh, oh. They that go down to the sea... Yes. It's fresh. Do you mean to say that? Yes. Oh, how are your brothers? Charlie and, um, and Joe. Are they still travelling abroad? Well, they must. They promised the king. He commandeth and raiseth up the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof, and we near to drown. Very good. <laughs> you just said that. <laughs> Dog, you promised to abandon your detestable vile <laughs> What, and achieve a fiddle? <laughs> oh, Harry, Harry, Harry. I will travel no more. I resolve that I shall go abroad no more. It's unimaginable. None. Who would but think it or plot it? Some would, some do. But then I am beset by plots, am I not, my Lord Shaft? When I die, oh, God I'll save you. your majesty. I know not what my brother might do. I am much afraid that he may be obliged to travel again for his religion. I shall take care to leave my kingdom at peace, wishing that he may long keep it so. These are all my fears and little of my hopes and less of my reason. I tell you, poets, that one, my bastard, pretty Prince Perkin, will be put on the throne by the Protestants, by the Whigs under Shaftesbury, the loudest bagpipe in the squeaky train. You must fight Shaftesbury for me. You must fight Popery, too. I'm so weary. Do excuse me for taking such a long time of dying. At doomsday, my Lord Shaftesbury, we shall see whose ass is blackest. <laughs> <laughs>